back with another one. So uh, I got some stuff for the car and everything. We got uh, got a new filter. So I'm gonna go ahead and get that installed. I got an old nasty crusty one. I mean, if that's what you want to call it. So um, yeah, you can tell that thing ain't looking too hot. It's got a bunch of, it like looks white almost. Um, camera doesn't quite pick it up, but it doesn't look very good. It's like been rinsed out with water so much. So I got a fresh one over there. We're gonna do that. Um, picked up several filters, as you can see, just to be on top of it for the oil changes. Um, and then we're gonna do this. So got the remaining three mounts. This is the one I need the most, which is the rear dog bone. Um, yeah, so I need to get that one in. Um, then we got trans and uh, engine mount there. So we'll get all that in and this thing will ride a lot better. Um, so yeah, whatever. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do a little do it yourself on this just because I think some people would like some of the small information, but obviously this isn't a difficult job. This is probably the easiest possible thing you can do on this car. So really all I'm doing is changing the air filter out on my aftermarket ETS air intake. Um, now, obviously this one's trash. This one looks great and new. But what a lot of people want to know is what is the replacement filter? Where do you get it? Um, so I went to MAP to get mine and this is the box it came in. So this must be the product number, I'm guessing. So if you're looking for exactly the replacement for the ETS filter kit, this is it here. Uh, I got this from MAP for like $60. So while I was getting the oil filters and stuff and the mounts, so pretty simple stuff. Um, all you gotta do is hit this bad boy right here. Um, that's a flathead screwdriver. So I'm gonna grab that. You just gotta get in there, twist that thing off. Pretty simple stuff. Then we'll pull it off here. Alright, obviously with that undone, you can pull it off. Comes off super easy. Old versus new. A little bit of a difference if you ask me. Go ahead and slap the new one on. Wow. <laughs> it's so oiled up, it just slaps right on. It almost looks too big, but it's probably right. So I'm gonna tighten this up real quick. All right, so I'm working on these mounts. This thing pulls just right up. A little uh, coolant overflow reservoir. Um, 10 mil right here, 10 mil right here on the back of that. Gonna rip those off. Then you got some 17s. Also got a ground sitting on there right there. So I'm just gonna go ahead and back all that out. Um, so, depending on how patient you wanna be, um, you can get back here with some extensions and stuff and go around this uh, power steering line. So uh, I don't know what I'm gonna do yet, but um, some people remove the power steering line, but I don't wanna do all that. So let's see what we can do. All right, so it's moving along pretty smoothly. I've got uh, 17 I use right here on the back side. And then I use the uh, socket on the front right there with that. So that's how you do that bad boy. Then you got the deep 17 for those back three with an extension on impact or I actually did the breaker bar first cause I got a weak ass impact right here. This is just a Harbor Freighter. So I used the uh, breaker bar, slid it over to get me some leverage. And yeah, all of it is broken free. So now I'm just gonna take it apart, make sure I put something under the engine to support it so that I can get this other mount in and not have the engine fall down. All right, I'm gonna keep going. All right, so I have gotten that bracket off now. Um, so all that's out. You can see the old mount. All this gap is gonna get closed. Well, that's gonna be gone. That didn't do anything. Lots of room for movement there, so that's all going to be eliminated. So we got to take three bolts out. So you got one back there, one here, one right there. And that fits perfectly, so 
Let's go ahead and yank this thing out. Um, I think what I'm going to do is, this is the bracket that was uh, there. I might just hit that with some paint or something real fast, let it dry overnight. Put the mount in and then put the bracket in after I'm done, let it dry overnight. But yeah, progress. Alright, pretty easy stuff. 14's all the way around. One, two, and three back there. Hit it, bam. Extendo gets all of it, so just go like that. Things are easy, that's going to lift right out. Set that down. Look at that. Just come through it out. If uh, get this last thread on this one. Ching. There it is. Easy stuff. Motor mount. Replacement. Beef. Sorry about this fan. Beef. There you go. Look at that thickness. Yeah. All right, now since there's a little more meat right here to the mounting plate, see how that's like paper thin and that's thick, boy. They give you some deeper stuff to put in, so don't forget to switch over your hardware. See how that's extra deep to accommodate for the extra thickness right there? So this one, this three pack obviously goes to this one because it has the three mounting points, so we'll use these to put the mount back in. All right, it's in, buttoned up, tightened down. All the 17s are in. The new hardware is 17, upgraded from 14, so that's pretty nice. So you should have 17 everything minus a few 10s, and then the what is it like a 12 I think to put on the power steering line there, and then you got the 7 eighths to put on the power steering. I did have to pull that top part off. So yep, be ready for that. That was 7 eighths. Just a reminder. So I just kind of pop, propped it up there, that way the buoyancy wouldn't drain everything everywhere. And yeah, looking good. So I'm going to put that back on, put the reservoir back, this side is done. And then we'll move over to the transmission side. Alright, it's in, buttoned up, tightened down, all the 17s are in. The new hardware is 17, upgraded from 14, so that's pretty nice. So you should have 17 everything, minus a few 10s, and then the... What is it, like a 12, I think, to put on the power steering line there. And then you got the 7 eighths to put on the power steering. I did have to pull that top part off. So, yep, be ready for that. That was 7 eighths, just a reminder. So I just kind of pop propped it up there. That way the buoyancy wouldn't drain everything everywhere. And, yeah, looking good. So I'm going to put that back on, put the reservoir back. This side is done. And then we'll move over to the transmission side. So went ahead and got this other mount in. Um, I conveniently don't have any footage for y'all, but uh, we're gonna go ahead and drive it and stuff. So um, took quite a bit to get it out. There's a lot of stuff in the way. I had Alec come help me out um, and everything. So I noticed um, the firmness right away. Obviously the NVH increases a little bit with the increased diameter and everything so it kind of wobbles in here a bit and if you're not used to that it's intimidating but I don't mind it. Getting down the street a little bit feels really good. Um, steering response is much better, not a lot of slack. Dude down the street go. Really quick shifts. It knows what cell it's in a lot better now, so it's just super responsive. Still don't even have the dog boat done and that's the one that's broken so I still got a broken mountain here technically. 